Hello, I am Tato Cat and welcome to my channel. Today we are playing the letter. Previously, we uh, fetched Isabella, not Becca, and uh, went to Zach's place. We waited around for a bit because we decided, well, we're going to get down to the bottom of this ghosty thing. Or whatever it is, and we needed Zach for that, and Zach wasn't there. So we waited, 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 ate some potato chips, and waited some more. And now... We finally meet Zach, and we're about to talk about the news. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much where we left off. Let us continue. Or, is it the other brother? The younger one who keeps insisting that he'll quit school so she could come home. That was two years ago. As far as I know, she's already sorted that one out, too. That one out. No, two was at the end of that. It couldn't have been her father, right? With the mansion sale, she has earned enough to cover every bill for a while. It should. So, what is it then? No problem. It should be in the afternoon news as well. Whatever's bugging her, I doubt it's something meant for a casual discussion. Well, she would have mentioned it sooner. Talking my curiosity for later, I take the remote and begin cycling through the channels. A distraction. Not a good one, I admit. But it's definitely better than leaving her to brood. Eventually, I find one doing a recap of this morning's reports. And there it is. The poor guy is un unidentifiable with how badly his body's been burned. This looks like it has an identity though. Just saying, this looks like a human being. If he's unidentifiable, this looks like an identity. Murder via arson? That'd be the logical explanation. If it was the officer looking into it. If I was the officer looking into it. Except, they couldn't find the source of the fire. And the fire didn't even spread. Found dead in the early hours of the morning today. The fire was contained within the room and no other tenants were harmed, according to Luxbon police. They're going... To consider spontaneous human combustion soon enough if they don't find anything else. But what's important for everyone to know is the state of the room. A similar writing was found in another victim's room from last week's incident. Both were employees of Briar Realty Corporation. LBN has reached out to the... Like what happened to Cooper. Hell, I wonder how many other deaths like this have I've missed while I've been looking into right. The LPD is already thinking it's serial killer at this point. How long until they consult with the Long London Metropolitan? I'm not sure. The Anselm Butcher has always been an enigma, even to the people within the city. Fun for a few years? Then in the next, one body after another is found. Merely handling the case has apparently driven the chief inspector insane years ago. He never did find out who committed those murders. Maybe now this time... This is because of that thing, isn't it? I did this somehow. Her words all come out like a whisper. But each syllable lingers in the air, heavy with her guilt. In the thick tension of the room, they strike harsher than any of the things we've said. However, she also has to understand, no, that she isn't the only one on this. No one has asked her to take this upon herself. Rebecca won't. Zach won't. I sure as hell won't. 
It ain't too late. We, we could still fix this. There's three of us here. Yeah, Zach. Four if you count Rebecca. No, she's... She's... No one just likes... No one likes her. She's mean. She yells all the time. Throws books at people and ghosts. She's staying away from this. No, she's not. I don't want to involve her in this any more than I already have. Both of you as well. Yeah, well... Oops. I already said it. That's completely out of the question. Stop asking. Encouragements aside, this is still a whole fucking mess and we're in it blind. The only way to make it worse is if we start running around like a bunch of headless chickens. But... I have a concrete plan now. I think. That's reassuring. Ash, that's super reassuring. We can do this. Probably. <laughs> Maybe Isabel is right. Maybe we should dig deeper into BRC itself. Maybe we are looking at it the wrong way. However, my suspicions are mine for the moment. The details are something Zach doesn't need to know until I have something to show. It's enough that he's aware that I have an idea in mind. For his part, Z-Man doesn't push it and nothing but a heavy silence leaves our departure hours later. And that's when I screw with Zach and he dies. He might have died. He probably died. Like, 99% sure I killed Zach. Seriously, Zack would probably make a more responsible officer than me. If only he had jo had the heart to join the force. He could certainly use more kind people like him. But, as good as the th that thought is, I push all of it into the back of my mind as Isabel and I head for my car. Tonight, I can't stay distracted except for a few half-hearted attempts to get some kind of reaction from Isabella. The drive to BRC is quiet. Awkward affair. More so the hour-long wait for nightfall. Even with only two of us, the place is rife with tension, with tense energy. Only a matter of minutes now. But the ticking seconds don't take away the edge. And for the fifth time, I reach out to fiddle with the radio. Adjusting and turning the knob with no real purpose. It's a nervous quirk I've developed and never bothered to correct during stakeouts. Something to keep my mind occupied during long nights. What else is there for me to do? The person I usually count on for a casual out of the blue chat refuses my attempts at starting one. Ash, out with it! If you have something to say. The way she quickly falters into silence after, in spite of the tone she takes though, it makes me doubt if she really means everything she's telling me right now. She hasn't even glanced my way since we arrived. Having second thoughts? You can still back out if you want. We're just going to my office. Why should I? Dunno. You can get in trouble maybe. This isn't exactly legal. Go PRC out, see if the real estate company has any more information that may be of help, find things about Cooper and the other agents assigned to the Ermengarde mansion. According to Isabella, it's the last property the victims have worked on. Sure, I could also check the station for full reports. That's the easy, semi-legal way. But I don't want to bump into the chief right now. The guys at the precinct will definitely throw me out under his orders as soon as they see me. Not that my plan right now is any better, I'm just breaking into a different place, more or less, with a civilian to boot. The latter still doesn't sit well with me, it never will, 
especially if this might put her in a very tricky position afterwards. She's been very careful when it comes to her work. Almost a model employee, as people would say. Why is she throwing caution to the wind now? I'm not an employee here. I'm not supposed to be looking for any confidential stuff. Only people like you are privy to. If you mentioned earlier that this is your plan, I might have had enough time to think about it. I already promised to help if you need access to those files. I didn't think you'd want to see them this soon and in this way. Besides, the same goes for you, right? You were taken off your case. Won't you get in trouble with your boss? Most definitely, yes. Honestly, it's a toss-up between breaking into her office or into the Wrights Mansion. As it stands, I'll have an easier time getting in here first, after all. Why would someone want to break into a realty company? Been here many times before anyway, for a few casual visits, when I wanted to bug Security Cat. Over the years, I've more or less grown familiar with their security setup and how badly staffed they are. Plus, it's an old building. If the bankruptcy rumors are true, it just means their access protocols might also be outdated. Still, I can do this on my own, you know. Really? And how are you even planning to get into our office without an access card? Please explain. Well, I was going to pry open the card reader and use a gecko. You're a hopeless case. I really want to know why no one has locked you up yet. Yeah, you're helping me with this. Willingly. Yeah, because it's slightly less illegal if I if it's done this way, Ashton. I don't think that'll sit well with the Philippine Embassy either. Chances are you'll probably get deported the minute they find out. Low blow, I know. But it's worth a shot when she can still turn back. It's not like I don't have any means to get into the place. With or without her, I have a way. At least I have a reason to be snooping about. My badge and rank can speak for me in case things go south. You? For a passing second, it seems to work. A hint of panic and hesitation flashes across her features. She looks to me with searching eyes. Then, unexpectedly, it dissolves. Not behind the fear I'm anticipating, but underneath something sharp and searing. I'm not sure what she sees exactly, or what she's hoping to find in the short while she holds my gaze. All of it merely goes unspoken, and no longer than a minute later, she simply averts her attention back to the window, training it once again at some point outside. Isabella, please, now is not the time- It's too late for that, Ash! Give it a rest. An appeal, spoken in a voice too harsh, coming from her. Perhaps unintentional, perhaps one that's already too exhausted of everything going on lately. <sighs> it's hard not to concede when she takes on a tone, on that tone, and soon, despite myself, I sigh, tucking away every concern I've been lugging around in favor of trusting her on this. According... According her? According to her? The same confidence she has implicitly given me all this time. All right, okay, if that's what you want. And don't worry, I didn't mean what I said earlier. Mm-hmm, kind of. I... I won't let anything happen to you. That's true, though. Lerves her too much. Her lips briefly turn up in a smile, though. None of the cheer reaches her eyes. Just get this over with, okay? Everyone should be out of the office by now. Somehow, the uncertainty in her posture makes me wonder if she's intended it as some kind of comforting gesture. Whether it's for me or for her, she doesn't let me find out. Without saying another word, she exits the car while I'm left scrambling and chasing after her. She's already at the side entrance, a hand raised on the card reader beside it, and another poised 
to push the door open when I catch up to her. Whatever doubt there has been in her face a while ago, it's gone. Seeing her like this makes it easier to believe my worries are unfounded, that things might go smooth this time. Way to jinx it, Ash. And where do you think you kids are going? Mm-hmm. Damn it, Ash. It's late. Most, uh, most offices in this building have already closed up shop for the weekend. The bloke seems friendly enough, though. One can't really tell from his voice alone. He might be the wary sort, for all I know. Keeping an unconcerned face and a loop air won't hurt until I figured out how to wiggle us out of this situation. Just come back on Monday if you have important business. Look from the way Isabel's face brightens up. It looks as though getting through won't be too much of a problem. He's probably been working here for a few months already, then maybe around four to six months max. Otherwise, he would have recognized Isabella or me at first glance. I haven't shown my face here since I've been assigned to the firm case a year ago. In the first place, none of their security officers ever lasted a year in service. The longest was around seven and a half. I'll give this guy around that before he gets fired one gets fired or finds a better paying job. For the moment, his too friendly attitude is almost a gift. Hey, Sev! Oh, look who we have here. Been a few days since I last saw that ponytail in here, uh Santiago? <laughs> Close enough! Wait, wait, don't tell me yet. I'll, I'll get it right this time. Sanchez! You were closer the first time? <laughs> ah, drat. I swear it is on the tip of my tongue. I just need a hit. Yeah. I take it back. This geezer is not going to last past the month. I can't even remember a regular employee's name. Alrighty, I'm sure of it this time. Santillan? Santillan? Bruh. <laughs> Still a few ways off, Seb. Isabella, we don't have all night. No, no, just let me handle this. Yeah, shut up, Ashton. Sorry, Seb. Some other time. We're in a bit of a hurry. I just need to get a few things from my cubicle. Important work stuff, you know? Is it okay if we drop upstairs for a sec? Oh, absolutely. No, go right ahead. As long as you have your access card with you, we're good. Not sure if I'm allowed to let your boyfriend in, though. Oh, Seb. Who, me? Who else would he be talking about, Ashton? My what? Who, why else would you be there with a boyfriend? I guess it could be a client, but like it's still weird. Boyfriend is more reasonable thought there. Just go with it. Your boyfriend? The, the guy with you, isn't he? It's a fair observation, if I do say so myself. Yeah, thank you for validating my thought process. Zach, Ashton. I keep getting everyone's mix names mixed up at this point. <laughs> it's been a lot of characters. Needless to say, the silence that descends is both uncomfortable and terribly awkward. Although the latter probably coming mostly from me because in the next second, Isabella laughs. <laughs> Laughs. Lighter than the ones I've heard from her lately. A comforting sound, really. After seeing her in such a dour mood since this morning. Even as all of it subsides into mere chuckles sooner than I'd like. It's comforting to see that I'm at least partially responsible for it. Despite my poor heart being beaten to a sorry pulp. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. He's definitely not my boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, I just see the stabby, stabby, stabby things happening right now. She might as well have set it on fire and reduced it to dust while she's at it, frankly. The number of no's in that sentence alone is a bit too much. Christ, one would have been enough to get the message across. 
Did you really have to put it that way? That's impossible! Stop being funny, Seb. I'll go on ahead, okay? She quickly shuffles inside with nothing more than a small wave, leaving behind an even more awkward atmosphere for me to wade through. It would have been bearable if I didn't have to suffer through the stranger's amusement. Alas, woe is me. Not the boyfriend, but close to it, huh? M mind your own business. <laughs> oh, poor Ashton. <laughs> Kids these days. Ah, good to see her up and about, though. Thought for sure she'd up and disappear like the others. Hmm, yes, tell us more about this stuff. Excuse me? Ah, you know, stuff in the news. You mean what happened with Rose Cooper? If I'm going to be stuck here with him for a while, I might as well try to gather as much intel as I can. He may just be a guard, someone with no real authority, but most of the time, people like him are the ones who know more than they let on. Yeah, but even before that, we've got a couple of good blokes we never saw again. Yes, Seb. Tell us even more. Really? Those guys could have just resigned for all you know. No, I only catch tidbits of stuff from over here. Oh, seriously, I heard the branch is getting flushed soon, but that's no excuse for anarchy. Eh, figures why boss man's been in an awful temper these past months. They managed to strike a good deal with the mansion in Anselm, right? That didn't do the trick? <laughs> didn't seem like it. The bloke shouting like no tomorrow again. Wasn't very pleased when Gurley called and asked for another leave yesterday afternoon. Gurley? Isabella? It's not too surprising, considering she's already been gone for three days. Now she's asking for another? Not that it's a bad thing. It's within her rights as an employee, but Isabella rarely uses her work leaves. Yeah, or Lassie, if you ask me. She found him a buyer for that mansion, after all. The least he could do is be considerate to her after a family member's passing. Wait, what? The rumors, BRC, Rose Cooper, missing in action employees, all of it ceases to matter in that instant. Almost on instinct, my eyes zero in on the intercom speaker, as if staring daggers at will. Show me the man behind the voice so I can see the truth in his face myself. Oh, you don't know? No, what? Uh, n nothing. Uh, I shouldn't be the one you're asking, and, um, you know, things might get a bit boring here. <laughs> no one really wants to hear what a poor old guard wants to say. Why don't, why don't you just go after her? As long as you're not looking to create trouble for me, it won't be a problem. You aren't here for that, right? He's lucky I'm not here to hurt anyone. If I were someone with ill intention, he might not be smiling at the end of the day. Well, no, but... I'll go and unlock that side entrance for you, then. Just don't forget to turn off the lights before you both leave, okay? Hey, wait a second. What do you mean by... Cuts off the connection before I can finish. And the rest of my question dies in my throat. Soon the latch clicks and the side door swings open. The Seb, a stop man wearing a uniform still too loose for him, waves me over from the gap before he disappears behind the station again. Just my luck. Here I thought I'm going to have to count on whatever Isabella brings with her. Although, no matter how much I want to feel happy, something else has already taken a firm seat in the forefront of my mind. Is that why she's been acting not like herself today? Since when? Of course... As I step into the building, I try to push all of these questions as far down as I can. I need to focus. Work is work. But, if what I've heard is exactly what I think it is, if it's a sign of things to come, honestly, I don't feel too good about that. It's a quiet ride up to the Stevens Fort, where BRC Luxborn main office is. 
Sev has been kind enough to switch the guest elevator's power on, just as I'm about to head for the fire exit stairs, which is a welcome relief. I'm an active guy, but stairs... I don't want to tire out too quickly in case things get ugly. There probably won't be any trouble with the building this quiet, but you never know. I swear, the whole place definitely feels eerie at this time of night. But until I've confirmed anything, those are still just stories. Worse things can happen. No need to scare myself. Staying calm means fewer mistakes. Oh, I sure am fucking gutsy, especially with what I'm doing. Yes, indeed you are. I am breaking a lot of laws here. I'm also putting Isabella in a lot of risk. Best thing that I can come out of this is that Isabella is right all along. Worst case scenario? One. Someone finds out Isabella's involvement in this and her boss fires her. Two, I find evidence that would implicate BRC or Luke Wright in the crime, and my meddling, if I'm not careful enough, makes an indismissible in court. Though, I'll be honest, I strongly prefer losing my job or facing Wright over some spirit or ghost or whatever it is. I could always work around the problem with the former. Isabella could also find a better job. PRC never did pay her properly despite her efforts. But fighting off a phantom? How does one even do that? Well, uh... Becca threw a book at it, I assume. Do guns even work with them? Yeah, not going to happen. Yeah, I don't think shooting a ghost will work. Uh, well, did Sam and Dean ever shoot a ghost? Maybe they did. Can't remember. But tonight, I'm here to fix things. If I do it without leaving a trail, all the better. Good thing that's what I'm good at. Easy way in. Yay! What I'll probably never be good at is finding the proper words when the sitch calls for it. But seeing Isabella's small form beyond those doors, how she pushes through despite carrying an entirely different burden this time, how she's pretending as if everything's normal, it's difficult not to try. People who have never looked beyond her smiles will never know, will never understand. Hell, even Rebecca is probably not yet aware of this. I get it. We have other problems at hand. I've done the same thing plenty of times to protect myself after all. But it's all in her eyes when she glances up as a few light wraps I give the door. She wastes no time in leaving the, me the mess of papers on the table and opening it for me. Though, even her confusion as she takes in my presence barely hides it. Seb, let you in? The rough edge in her voice rings a whole different tune now that I'm aware of why. But knowing is different from hearing it straight from her. I can't simply bring this up, can I? It's not a topic suited for casual conversation, and I doubt she wants to talk to me about it. As much as I want to help, there's a distance between us I'll never be able to cross. One that wouldn't even be there if it wasn't for me. Perhaps... If I had been more honest years ago and less of a coward, I might have been able to. Figures. I couldn't even do that for the one person I keep telling myself I care deeply about. What can I say? I'm a very charming person. To a rock, maybe? <laughs> this is the closest we can get to it, I suppose. The light banter, the fleeting glances, or sometimes the long bouts of silence. And it's enough. 
for me it is. Because even without words, there's comfort. With her, it's easy. Must be a pretty cool rock then. Ugh, get over yourself. Hey now, I deserve some slack here. Today's supposed to be my day off, and yet here I am helping you out. Yep, yep, yep. Well, we'll see what we find in the realty office. I am Tato Cat. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon. <laughs>